Hello and welcome back to CSE's live chat, the second episode of 2025. I'm Sukanya Nair and I have with me today Rajneesh Tareen. He heads the CSE Sustainable Habitat team. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Thank you, Sukanya. So, uh, last week, CSE kickstarted a campaign called as School It. This right. campaign essentially aims to reimagine the way we build our homes, offices, cities for a sustainable energy efficient future. So, Rajneesh, uh, can you shed some light on how does rising temperature and extreme heat events affect our built environment? And more importantly, is our built environment ready for the heat of the future? Right. I think it's a very apt question to be asked at this moment because last year and rather the, every year, there's an increase of heat, which is we are now facing. And rather, I think um, this was the 2024 was the first year when we actually officially breached 1.5. So this was something I remember when I started my career and we used to think that what will happen when 1.5 will reach. So this is the reality of the 39 and 40 days of extreme heat, which was evident where across India, not only in Delhi or any of the urban center across India, we felt it. So many people started questioning about is the kind of uh, development or human habitation model which we are following, is this something which is apt to it? So, CSC intervened into this and we've done a lot of research to find out. So what we what we understand is one is there is ambient heat, which is of course is a, you can say some addition which is coming from climate change perspective. But when it comes to urban centers, this heat is recirculated heat also, which is better. There's a heat element, which is urban heat island effect, which, which is contributing a lot of recirculated heat as well as what remains trapped into our environment for a very long period. Now, this additionality which is there in these urban centers is because of, you can say, the bad choices of material to a great extent with the bad choices of, you can say, design, layouts and all. Because we do have in our country certain regulations and conditions which talks about buildings. But unfortunately, the building hardwares do not work when your layouts are not set in proportion. Like, for example, your wind movement. If it's restricted, even if you have a best of the window designs, it doesn't help you in that. So that means... The, the way we design, the way we choose the material, the way the agglomeration is happening, that is something which is adding a lot of impact onto it. And then uh, because we are in a heated environment, which has been now jacketed more with additional recirculated and added heat, we bring in another anthropogenic heat generating machine, which is called air conditioner to cope with it. And that's the only choice you can say, which people think is the very off the shelf available to them. And that actually aggravates the problem further because now it's a, you can say a circular heat economy which is happening. So you, instead of uh, generating a cool within the uh, design or otherwise would happen, now we are just displacing the heat and then there is more heat which is there. Anymore. So an unfortunate part, what is happening is the delta, which is like, for example, the day temperatures are higher, nighters are cooler. So what we found in various analysis is that day and night temperature deltas are not that good at used to be in past. So that means your temperatures do not drop. So your continuous requirements of energy as well as on other aspects are increasing. Urban heat island is much more profound in the night time. Right? And now, and, and it's, it's becoming an issue of equity for the people because there, are, there is a huge amount of population which is which do not afford this and or may not even have an apt environment of, uh, you can say, the housing and other things which is available with them. Now, they have to be their part of without conscious contribution, they have to bear the repercussion of it. And that's where I think the heat comes as one of the important factors for us to look in. And yeah. Um, so we have been hearing about thermal comfort. We have been hearing about energy efficiency. Right. Is thermal comfort solely about energy efficiency or is there more to it? And can you tell us what is what is really the difference? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll interestingly place certain episodes of learning which I learned over the period and right while, while I was graduating in the subject. You then connect the dots with me, right? For example, uh, if you remember 1995, there was a, a movie called Rangila which came in and in which Amir Khan actually goes into uh, one of the restaurants and he say that Ke fan chala de. So he said, Ke, sir, AC is on. So then he says that it's the move maker of Kurdish. And the whole audience laughs at it. Now imagine this is 1995 when the country do not understand the concept of air conditioner. That would have been a lovely point where we should have actually stopped. That we should not have understood it. 
because we uh, whatever we understood from there onwards was something wrong. The second challenge which came into my life is when somebody walked to me and I was managing the, those facilities and they said that I have a dry eye syndrome. Mm -hmm. So the person walked to me and asked that I have a dry eye syndrome. Can there be a humidity increase which could be done because you are dehumidification certain environments by extra use of air conditioning? So that's the time when the question resonated in my mind that this is something different. It is not energy efficiency. It is not about just the temperature. So there comfort arise from many various other aspects of it. So something needs to be explored. And that's the time when I found when CSC was talking about this. Okay. That is where, where I got to know about this concept of that there is something which is different between energy efficiency and thermal comfort. Now journeys you have to be explored at. Now in between, if you actually see, there is a moment which we have seen is that we move from incandescent lamp to the LED bulbs at this point. Right. Now, this journey of energy efficiency is celebrated, but what this incandescent lamp to uh, LED, what it ha additionality what has been added along, nobody knows. The, the good thing which LEDs has done is they have added a more color renovations. So colors are much more, the, so the light is close to the natural light, you can see colors much more refined. So that means your eyesight impacts are getting may or may not get impacted, but there is some kind of health benefit also which arrives along with the modernization of technology. But this is something which is missing when it comes to our side of the world when we talk about thermal comfort. Right. So the comfort is about, uh, you can say it, it has a various parameters, as I said, the wind flow becomes one important aspect because that fan is an important element in it or any kind of breeze which, which can work in. Your, even the, you can say comfort is decided by the kind of uh, clothing the kind of, uh, you can say, the immediate things around you. So the various factors start making a conjunction together, and that's where the comfort comes in. So, so when you when you bring efficiency uh, without creating a discomfort, or rather, or you can say, um, when you design very well, and there is uh, your passive is very, very well utilized, your building gives you a very comfortable feel without using much of, or rather, nil energy requirements comes in and or rather which is more affordable and uh, you can say it's much more convenient to the people that's where the uh, you can say thermal comfort comes in so the comfort which is like average to everyone it's not that one person sitting in the in the room feels it's very discomfort another one is comfortable because everybody perceives temperature differently right and similarly the perception of humidity is also very different right. so so there are various nuances which uh, now we try to mimic that into uh, in an air conditioner building, which never happens. So most important thing is that India should retain the typology of naturally ventilated, which is there with us. We should go into our passive designs techniques and bring up some something which has been always there. So, so we have, uh, you can say adiabatic cooling. There were various such features which were already there into our element of research and science, which needs to be incorporated well. That's where the thermal comfort is. I think hopefully people will understand the variation between the that just being energy efficient and thermal comfort. Definitely, you can say thermal comfort is a larger game and rather you much more... With nice umbrella. Got it. Uh, so, like I earlier mentioned that CSC has kicked off the Cool It campaign. Can you tell us a little bit of uh, what is this Cool It campaign all about? See, Cool It... Is, is basically we are looking at that thermal comfort, how it needs to be given to the community in a very affordable manner. Now, when you look at affordability, of course, there is a huge role of, you can see the passive features come in. Now, the moment the passive comes in, um, in the modern world, which is like more an active engineering, which is more profound, we do not have, or rather the information with regard to this has been removed quite a lot. So we don't have any history of it uh, in terms of rather with uh, the questions are there. People wants to know, want to do it, but effectively there's no effective tools and mechanism available. To so what this campaign will do is make is going to give you very tangible products. Like for example, when you when you you will get certain videos for a very clear understanding of it. You will get certain calculators by which you can calculate how much gains I can get it from it. You will get certain guidebooks for how to do it. Do it yourself. So that people have, so initial level of doubts are taken off. So that at least now this ground is fair, right? So you have information, you have that knowledge which was missing. So you have that content available. Now you can make an informed decision between that do you really want to take a shortcut, which which definitely may, may not be a very good when you consider it an overall impact of it. 
or you want to take a very informed decision, which is a root of maybe your natural ways and methods and methodologies, which will be much more lighter for you and much more, uh, you can say, conducive to the requirement and as well as they bring very little uh, nominal increase or rather no increase onto your energy demand. Yes, when the human population adds, there are some amount of energy will be incremental. But let's see how we can keep our low carbon pathways very attain. And the only way by which India is striving for, for example, net zero, the, the easiest and the possible way is that we remain stick to our stand of how our adaptations were there and how the passive design and feature were there. So we're going to bring up all these combinations together so that people get a very nuanced way. Like for example, when you talk about heat, we already have a toolkit of heat which is available on this Coolit uh, website or you, the, the link which is there on CSC website. So the campaign page already has a, a guidebook which is on to how to identify yourself, whether you are in a heat pocket or not. So that's there. We are coming up with something next, which is on the schools specifically, that how the typology of a school can actually work because the vulnerable group of children are there in that area, which needs to be like, uh, you can say, a lot of doubts are coming with regard to school and heat because now it's a new kind of, you can say, the a, a disruptive uh, you can say the work from homes or, or the operate from homes is coming for schools, primarily when it comes to heat also. So we're bringing up issue on that also. Similarly, there's next on design as well as on this. So you can keep visiting that page and there'll be a lot of more nuanced information coming. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Rajneesh, for joining us. And also, thank you so much for watching our episode today. So we have planned to see, uh, as Rajneesh has already mentioned, we have planned a series of live chats also around it. And we'll be sharing a calendar of events very soon. So do subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed. Uh, and the rest you can find on our Cool It campaign page on our CSE's website. Until then, bye-bye. Um, see you soon. Bye-bye.